everybody, and welcome back to the Mace of Skeins podcast. My light is flickering, and I hope you don't notice that, and I hope the light bulb does not run out. <laughs> we are up to a fabulous start. <laughs> My name is Macy. I'm the host of the Mace of Skeins podcast, and also the owner and dyer behind Mace of Skeins Yarn. Um, I'm in DFW, Texas. It is still in the hundreds of degrees. Um, I think it's the high today is like 107 or something crazy like that. This episode is going to be a little short uh, just because I have just a couple of things to show and I wanted to record something today. First, before I forget, this is a shirt that I showed last episode and I knit this out of my brand new worsted weight base. So if you're new and you didn't know, I am getting rid of my spade 7525. Uh, fingering and DK and also my heart worsted, which is 100% superwash merino. I'm getting rid of those and replacing it with a brand new and improved spade, which is 8515. And uh, that's going to be spade fingering DK and worsted. It's so squishy. And this was knit out of the uh, worsted weight. This is what it looks like. I look like a early 2000s like pop icon right now with the, I took my belly button ring out like a year ago and I wish I wouldn't have cause it would have completed the look, but it's Britney bitch. That's what it feels like I look like. <laughs> um, but I love this top so much and I knit it out of the Stitch on the Beach colorway, which was the uh, trunk show exclusive for my Sippin' and Stitch and Trunk Show. I did a uh, lat two weeks ago at Juju Knits and before I forget, Juju Knits Instagram has been hacked. It has been held for ransom, which is complete, absolute bullshit. And I don't know why anyone would want to, one, hack anybody's Instagram, but mainly hack a little yarn store's Instagram. I don't understand the logic behind that. I don't know who would do it, but y'all know how much Juju Knits means to me. It was the very first trunk show I've ever done. The first yarn store that had anything to do with my yarn. Um, and I love the owner, Julie, so, so much. So if you could please, 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 I am begging you, if you have one, open up Instagram, type in Juju Knits FW, the, it'll be on the screen, and click the, the three little dots in the corner. I don't know what it looks like on an Android, uh, but on Apple devices, it's the three little dots in the top corner. You click it, uh, click report account. Um, I'm doing this based off memory. I think it's report account and then say, uh, something else or maybe I'll put a screenshot of what to to do but uh it's being hacked so Julie the owner does not have um she doesn't have access to the account so it's some crazy person some somewhere else some piece of shit is holding onto her account and demanding her for money in order for them to give her the password back to log in and have control of her account again which is bullshit uh so if you could please 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 report uh, the Juju Knits account as being hacked because we need to get her <laughs> account back because this is, I mean, it's like my near and dear local yarn store and it's the one I do most of my trunk shows with. It just, it sucks. Um, and please, just please, please let me know that you've reported it. Just please. <laughs> Thank you. And I'll, I'll type down the steps uh, down below in the description box because I can't remember them off the top of my head, but I'll list how to do it. Ugh. Sometimes people just suck. Uh, but anyways, that was um, the yarn store, Juju Knits, is where I did the Sip It and Stitch and Trunk Show where you could get this. And at that trunk show, my friend Dee Dee, she uh, watches podcasts, she's a VIP patron, she has made several of my sample knits. Surprise me with this! I have no idea what the pattern is. I don't know if uh, they made it up on the spot or if they follow the pattern, but it is a crocheted... I'm, I, is this a granny stitch? I'm not sure. I, I mean, it looks like what granny squares look like. So possibly, uh, but it's sparkly and I believe it's rayon, I think is what she told me. Uh, but I love it so much. And it's got like a little tie. I think that's stuck in my hair. Um, it's so fun. And I've literally been, I've been wearing this and this so much to the point of like, Oh, you're wearing it again. Like I've been wearing the shit out of it and I need to make another one of these tank tops. And my other friend Phoenix uh, just sent me a picture of a blue one that she's making me. 
I am literally, y'all, these are the best things ever. And they totally save, like if you need to wash your hair and you didn't want to, these are perfect. <laughs> um, okay, that's, I wanted to say what I was wearing and talk about Julie's Instagram, Juju Knit's Instagram, uh, before I forgot. But uh, really the main reason while I wanted to do a podcast is because you know how last time I said that I was a little bit obsessed with the Pacific Knit Co, uh, the doodlers, the doodle shawls and the doodle charts and the doodle packs and all of that stuff. Does that ring a bell? Well, I may or may not have on Saturday night. Uh, today right now is, uh, I think today is Friday. Yes, today is Friday. Um, I cast this on Friday the 25th, but y'all will not be seeing this on Friday the 25th. Um, I casted this on Saturday night and it was finished uh, two days ago. So I finished this on Wednesday. So from Saturday until Wednesday, and one of those days I did not touch it because I was so pissed off because I did the ribbing in a bigger needle size. I mean, I did the ribbing in the same needle size as I did the body of the project and I did not even think and I bound off and it was so floppy and so I was so upset at myself that I didn't knit for a day and then I ripped it all out and redid the ribbing and then blocked it. So I what four days Saturday Saturday night Sunday Monday Tuesday yeah it was like a three four ish day project. <laughs> Look I made the doodle count so the doodle I'm I keep looking over here because the pattern is right there and I can't show it because it's got all the charts on it but the autumn doodle autumn doodle charts expansion pack two so I bought every single one of the doodle packs except for the Seattle one just because I didn't go to flock so I don't really and I've never been to Seattle so I don't like that's like a it was like for that festival. Anyway, I bought, I think almost all of the doodle ones. I might've left out um, like the, just like the staple like shapes. I just got all the fun ones, like the fun, sh the fun like themed holiday uh, ocean floor, like all of those. And I merged, so I really don't remember which doodle is from which doodle pack, but I've got the autumn doodle infinity cowl and the autumn doodle like single cowl um and then all of the autumn expansion packs and then all the rest of them so i literally just cut them out like on the pattern i printed it and i just cut so it's just all the charts so i could like mix and match and like move them however i wanted to and i the only thing that i followed from the pattern of the single sided cowl was how many stitches to cast on and uh, it did say to do twisted rib, which um, picking up stitches in twisted rib was a bitch. Uh, when I had to like go back through and pick up the stitches because I dropped it. Uh, well, it's black yarn was the last one. And I was like, I'm not going to pick up stitches in black uh, because it was nighttime when I was doing this. Should I have had a light? Yes. So I picked it up on the first row of twisted rib. Oh my gosh, that's difficult uh but I did it so I'm showing these but remember it's from all of the doodles combined I don't remember which doodle pack had which doodle in it um I would just recommend buying all of them so first well actually first I started from the bottom but it's easier to show from top down okay so this yarn I should probably no I'm gonna I'm gonna show you the doodle cow first and then go over the yarn. Okay, so I've got little witch hats, which I totally should, which I totally should have done um, a different yarn for a little more contrast, but it was like at the point of like, oh my God, I'm almost done. And I didn't, but uh, then I've got some broomsticks, which kind of look like rakes, which is also fall. And then I've got the little jack-o'-lanterns, the cats, which is my favorite, favorite, favorite section. And I have a white cat named Honey. And uh, th this is totally honey on here. That's what my brain is envisioning. And then I got the little ghost and then the bats with like this interesting like symbol in between them. And then I've got the moons and the bottom ribbing. And y'all, I still have to weave in the ends. Um, I'm gonna come clean. I was doing great catching my floats and everything. Um, 
through here. So like I got the moons at the bottom, then the bats, the ghosts, and the cats. I did, yeah, pretty good. Catch them afloat. Then I knit the pumpkins when we had some friends over and like, that's like a 10 stitch. That, like I totally should have caught that float, <laughs> but I mean, I didn't. And then on the rakes or the broomsticks, I also didn't catch any and I sure as shit didn't catch any on the witch hats. It's okay. I mean, I didn't need to because it's just gonna be like, it's not gonna get caught on my nose. I mean, if it does, like, I'll just do that and it's off my nose. But the thing that I'm coming clean about, since there are so many different colors that I chose to do, I was not about to be bothered to weave in the ends. So I tied them all in loose, like I stretched out it out, loose, um, I blocked them without the weaves, without weaving the ends in. And then once the stitches were settled after it dried, I, um, tied loose double knots and I cut it. I know some of you were like, <gasps> why would you ever? And then all the other people are like, oh yeah, I do that too. I was not going to weave in the ends on this. <laughs> so I literally just double knotted it and cut it. Do I recommend doing that? Um, I don't know, but I trust the double knot. So who knows? <laughs> But I still have to weave in, I am going to weave in the, um, the ends on the ribbing. Guys, I mean, it's a cowl, so it's gonna look like this when it's on. And I mainly did this in the hopes of if I start knitting fall-themed garments that maybe, maybe we can manifest some lower temps. That's not how Mother Nature works, but you know, we can only hope. So I was planning on wearing this. We go on walks. Um, my partner and I go on walks at night because it's too damn hot to go walk at any other time of the day. So like 11 o'clock at night to anywhere between like 2 a.m. is when we go on walks. It's still in the high 90s. Um, like the other night it was midnight and it was still 101 degrees. So midnight walks are... I mean, you're still gonna sweat, but you don't get sunburned and you don't get sun poisoning, which uh, we, everyone here has to look out for that. So my plan is when we go on nightly strolls, um, and I say stroll, we walk four miles. So it, we don't jog, we don't sprint. We straight up walk. Most of the times I bring my knitting, but it's not like just take a walk around the block. It's four miles. Like it's a, I mean, it's a walk. So I'm planning that I can wear this in the fall and when the wind blows and stuff, you know, like when your nose starts to get cold and it's like the water that pours out of your nose where you're just like, oh, it's cold. Oh, yeah. And your nose starts to turn pink. That's my favorite weather. Um, I'm figuring I can just, you know, pull it up like this and I'll be on theme and I'll be cute and it'll be fun. But I love this. And I, the fact that I blew through this in three days, three and a half ish, four days, um, makes me want to make one for every single season. Now, will I be able to wear this in October? most likely not. Uh, will I be able to wear this in November? Most likely not. Maybe December, definitely January, and probably February. I don't, I mean, I don't give a flying fuck if I'm wearing a Halloween themed cowl in January. It's Halloween, like, I don't care. I love, I love this, and no matter what season it is, when it's temperatures enough to wear this, I will be wearing it. Um, so I'm so excited. And I really want to make a headband because that's like headband thickness, like for the cats, that's totally headband thickness. So I'm definitely going to make a headband of cats, but this is a project bag out of the stout stitch. Uh, sadly, he does not podcast as much anymore. Um, Zach Stout of the stout stitch crochet podcast. His husband Bradley made this for me like forever ago. Um, but let's see, I used a Chowgu 4, which is a 3.5 millimeter. I used that for the ribbing. And I also used a 6 for the um, the body, the main part. Uh, but this is what I was saying as like, these are the doodle. I'm holding them way back so you can't pause and zoom in on the church. Like I just printed out all of these doodles and um, like laid them how I wanted to. But no free charts for me. Okay, so the yarn that I used, the star of the show, the main 
not the mane, but the the ribbing, the background of the cats and the other ribbing is crafted by the fates. Oh no, I know I saved the ball band somewhere. I don't remember what base this is on. Um, damn, okay, yeah, I don't know um, where I put the ball band. It's somewhere over here I, and I know I'll find it as soon as I stop recording. Um, but this is the Summer in Spookyville. Uh, I think I showed this last episode, um, but this is Crafted by the Fates yarn. And I pulled, it's fingering weight. So this cowl is actually DK, but I pulled from the center and from the outside so I could get DK weight. I'm actually gonna put these behind me after I'm done. Um, the main color, so I don't know if you can tell, but I did black, maroon, black, main color well halloween black maroon black halloween black maroon black halloween so it's kind of had like a mirror effect a little bit so the black is uh mace of skeins on the diamond base in shadow cat which the diamond base has been discontinued and then the bats and the brooms are wool of the andes yes it is worsted no i do not care uh, Wool of the Andes Worsted. This is Lake Ice Heather, and this one was Claret Heather. I literally went into my bucket right here. It's not a bucket. It's one of those wooden crates that I painted white. Um, I have all of the, like, halfway used little bitty skeins. I have no idea what this is. I believe it's from, this is a, this was a mini, which I also pulled from the middle and from the outside uh, for the witch hats. This, uh, I'm pretty sure was from the Chelsea Lux Sparkle Advent Calendar 2020, I think. 2020, yeah. Um, Oh, this was, the, this is Crafted by the Fates, uh, Summer in Spookyville. This was the main thing, but this was the ribbing that I had to frog. Um, and I didn't know if I was gonna, going down a needle size, I was like, uh, brain, I don't know if that uses more yarn or less yarn. So I didn't, I just pulled from the ball. But that goes with that. Um, this other one is a mini skein. This is actually um, my yarn, but it was one that I was testing. This was actually the tester for Cupid. Um, but it was way too dark, but this is just an 80-20 mini. Uh, and that was pulled from the middle and from the edge. And I used that, I don't even know if you'll be able to see, on the witch hats, like the band in the middle, it's purple. I don't know if you can even notice the difference of that. But uh, <laughs> like I said, the witch hats should have picked a different color. The pumpkins were Mace of Skeins on the club base uh, in Roasted Pumpkin. Also pulling uh, from the center and from the edge. And then last but not, that's all of them, right? Ah, here was a lone migraine medicine, but clearly I had a migraine at some point when I was uh, working on this that I did not take. Um, this is Mesa Skein's High Roller Fingering, which is uh, the cashmere base in snow, which is a uh, dyed white, white, if that makes sense. <laughs> um, pulled from the front and from the back. The, I had a whole project in mind and I caked up some cashmere and then um, it got put in a bucket. But that was for the cats, which is the squishiest part. And it's so soft. And I was really worried um, because there's so many dark colors. I was like, oh shit. I didn't like, I didn't even think what if the black or what if the Halloween color or what if that dark maroon, like what if it bleeds and gets my cats gray, but, uh, didn't happen. And if it did happen, I wouldn't have been mad because Broadway rest in peace. She ran away to go be with her boyfriend is my guess, hopefully, uh, in 2020, but she's gray. So I'm like, okay, I love honey, my white cat. So this is honey. And if it bleeds, then it's Broadway. Win, win. But I do have two whips that I have been working on that y'all have seen. Hopefully this is a shorter episode. Um, usually when I say that, it still is super fucking long, but hopefully it's a little bit shorter. This was the tank top 
uh, I was making for me and then I realized I've got too many of these, not, not too many. I have just a couple of them, but I wanted to do a different, what in the, I wanted to try a different ribbing style, I should say. Um, and so I decided to make it for my niece, Millie, but I couldn't go any farther until I tried it on to see how her straps looked. This is also Mesa Skeins, um, like way, way, way early Mesa Skeins. This was before I was writing colorways down. This was Toucan. Um, I love it. I need to figure out how to dye it again, but I figured out the length of the strap. Tiny! <laughs> uh, this fits. It's actually like it's gonna grow with her, this strap, which seems ridiculous because it looks so tiny, but that's the correct length. And all I did was just pick up these stitches and I have not touched it because uh, after she was here, um, like not last week, but the week before, uh, I tried it on her and then set it down in the living room. And it was one of those things where if you, kind of like if you buy fruit and you put it in your fruit drawer in the fridge, you forget that you bought it until you find it like three weeks later when it's moldy and you can't eat it anymore. It was kind of like that. I put it on the living room chair because I had tried it on her um, in the living room and I forgot all about it until I was going to the kitchen, literally on my way uh, to grab the bag of yarn from the kitchen because usually if I'm knitting, drinking coffee, it's in there. And I saw it on the couch and I was like, ha, ah, forgot about that. <laughs> and then the very last thing, that I've been working on is this baby blanket for my cousin uh, Jackson who is having a baby in September um, and I've shown this to y'all I think I'm pretty sure I have shown this to y'all um, I literally just got two stripes done I did I move did I put a stitch marker no I did not um, it's a baby blanket it is way way bigger than it needs to be uh, way 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 bigger so it's worsted weight uh, and it is 280 stitches I cast on, I think, or 180, something to do with 80. But it is wide, it's, this is not a baby blanket, this is like a, a kid blanket. Um, yeah, I'm using, it's up there. Oh, duh, paint box, simply chunky. Um, oh, I think. That's my favorite baby yarn ever. Uh, it's all linked down below, but this, I've been forgetting to work on it. And, um, and oh, this is my little notions bag that I keep all my notions in. Uh, I've been forgetting to work on it, but at the same time, I'm like, okay, my light's doing it again. It is jitterbug like crazy. So sorry if it's flashing. Hopefully I can do something in editing where it makes it not flash as much. Um, but I'm like, okay, the baby's due in September. We're probably not going to be able to see it, see the, the baby until like Christmas, maybe. And besides like when they're, when they're teeny, teeny, tiny like that, like newborn, you're going to want to use the like little pizza box size blanket or bigger than that. But like, you're not going to need a giant toddler size blanket ASAP when it's born. So I'm like, okay, you've got some time to do that. Um, so I'm not like Russian, but I do need to get that done at some point. And oh, the last, last thing I've got, I've got two more things to talk about. If you are a local and if you are not local and you like to travel, DFW Fiber Fest. I am not vending this year, but voice crack. Uh, I am going and I am going to be part of the stitch marker swap. And I made all of my, I made all of my stitch markers. So this little cute Ikea bag, um, those are my favorite brand of Ziploc bags. I made all of these in one sitting because my brain works like that and I needed to do it all at once or else I would get sidetracked and never finish it. I made, I did not make these. I bought the charms and then put the little O-ring, is the, if it, that's what it's called, the little circle and then the alligator clip. So I'll, all I did was assemble the claws. Uh, I did not make these little chips or the little cards, but uh, they're ace of spades. This one's an ace of spade and this one is a um, ace, but it's a heart. And I figured those are very on brand of me, but I did the alligator claw clip so they could be um, knit and crochet markers. But I made, I think the package of charms, 
I think I ordered, I don't remember how many I ordered, but I think I have 110 or 120. It doesn't look like that much. <laughs> I was really hoping it would be a lot more, but I think I have 110 or 120 of these and my I ran out of um, Little Charms. So I might order some more of these off Etsy because um, I've got a ton of the alligator claws and the little circles. So I'm just gonna have to, I mean, it took a while to get these. So I don't know if the Etsy person made them from scratch or what, but if I can get my hands on some more before Fiberfest, I will. Um, oh, they would be cute earrings too. But the stitch marker swap is like, everybody meets up at a certain spot. I don't know where it is. Um, I think there's an Instagram post about it, but uh, everybody meets up and we swap stitch markers. So like, hey, I made this one. You made that one, cool, let's trade. And so you leave with like, a bunch of stitch markers. So like I'm bringing all of these to trade with people, if that makes sense. <laughs> I think that's how it works. I've never done it, um, but that's my plan. And I was like, I need to make some. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. So shop, I guess I've got one, I've got this big box of stuff to talk about, but um, shop. So if you did not know, currently last weekend was like the kickoff. I, your ears are correct when you hear this. All of my yarn right now, you don't have to pause it and go rush. I mean, you can if you want to, but all of my yarn is $19.99. $19.99. Yes, even cashmere, even Surrey, even mohair, all of my bases, every single thing, $19.99. Um, I'm doing that because I have two, four, six, eight, nine. Well, okay, if I combine those, it's really eight, seven and a half probably, if I fill my Ikea shelves um, of yarn left over from, uh, I took all of my inventory from Juju Knits, which if you have not already, go report the Instagram is hacked. Um, so there's no yarn at Julie's that's mine right now. I took it all because I want to start fresh with all my new bases in the fall. So I have all of that yarn plus all of the inventory I've had at home. So I've got a ton of Mesa Skeins yarn all on every base. Like I've got cashmere, I've got club, uh, heart, DK, uh, both DK of um, uh, cashmere and spade DK. And like every, every single base, I've got a ton of Surrey. I've got a ton of shell phone Surrey um, and a ton of mohair and Surrey in Lovebug a lot but I've got a lot a lot a lot of yarn and I need to get rid of it it needs to go and live with you for $19.99 because I refuse to do a shop update until I don't have any more of the yarn left so that's why it's super cheap because I know y'all are ready to be able to get the the drink colorways which I have pre-dyed a lot of them uh I've got, the wall is like filled <laughs> with the um, stitch and sip colorways. So I am trying to get, sorry, I'm reaching into my bucket over here of yarn so I can show y'all the new colors, but literally I've got so many sweater quantities worth of Nanny's yarn and shell phone, uh, Nanny's favorite and call me on my shell phone. I have the most of the same bases in. Um, and what, like, I don't know the amounts that I have left. Like I can't, like I could sit here and count, but if you're ordering on the website, just like keep clicking like the increased number of like the quantity and click add to cart. And like, if it doesn't let you like go down a number or like go up one to see how many I have, which will be however many it lets you put in your cart. Um, and that's how much I have. Or you can message me and be like, Hey, I really want a sweater out of shell phone. How many skeins of cashmere do you have? And I'll tell you, but, uh, Email me is the best way to go. I um, recently found an Instagram DM because I was standing right next to someone. And they're like, I sent you a DM, look for it. And I had to like scroll and scroll and it was under the request. And it was like from three, uh, I think it said three weeks ago. Or, and then I found one, that was the one they were talking about. Then I found one and it was like six months ago. And I was like, so Instagram DM is not the way to get a hold of me. Um, email is the way to get a hold of me. And um, if so, if you want to know how much quantities I have of something, there you go. But uh, uh, 
I refuse to put any of my new base on the website until all of my old spade is gone and all of really the old dye lots and everything like I'm not dyeing any of these colors again um, they're going into a vault I might bring them out in like a year or hey this color really goes this older color really goes with these new colors I'm gonna bring it back just for this so I'm starting fresh y'all as in fresh as in like I learned a new dye style um, and like I'm not dying any of the colorways that I've already dyed. Like I'm starting like brand spanking new. With a new base, I'm like fresh start girl, which is also a name of <laughs> colorway. Anyway, $19.99 on my website and I'm leaving at that price until everything is gone. So the faster it is gone, the faster the new yarn comes. And the new yarn, I just wanted to show y'all, I just grabbed random bases but uh i think i think i've showed it the last like three videos but this is jalapeno margarita which i think i did dye two extra skeins of worsted for me because this took uh one and a half so pretty much two skeins of worsted and i did dye extra of this because i think i'm gonna i'm either torn between jalapeno margarita or um pina colada of which one i'm gonna make me a tank top out of so jalapeno margarita it is jalapeno margarita color flavored is the main color if you've ever seen a jalapeno margarita they're really yellow and then it has the tahine speckles which is what it's usually rimmed with and then it's got some jalapeno speckles this um i grabbed it on surrey because i love the way that it looks on surrey come on this is tequila sunrise i love this one this is the one that I'm also thinking of maybe doing this and I grabbed it on Surrey because I love it. This is pina colada. If you've ever had a pina colada, it's like a milkshake texture, um, but it's like a yellowy banana-y color. And then usually it's like you get a couple of cherries on top and then a pineapple rind. So I tried to do like the cherry and then the pineapple, which is like the, the skin of the pineapple. So I, I love this one. <laughs> And then uh, strawberry lemonade, which used to be named something else. And I switched it to strawberry lemonade. I'm still trying to remember that I switched to strawberry lemonade. I love, love, love this one. It's got the leaves of the strawberries. Um, it's got all of the strawberry puree and all of the lemonade. And my mom has a tank top out of that. It's half strawberry lemonade, half watermelon moonshine, which was the most 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 popular at the trunk show which I was shocked by because this one was one of the ones that I was like no it doesn't really match I'm not gonna do it and my mom was like no I want a tank top out of it so she was the one really who put this one back in the collection but it is the dark juicy part of the watermelon with the rind and the seeds and then these two actually these I love together and you honestly could put, yeah, definitely. Sh jalapeno margarita, strawberry lemonade, Aperol spitz, spritz, <laughs> tequila sunrise and Paloma. Like this is match made in heaven. Um, but this is Aperol spritz. If you ever had one, the speckles are supposed to be like the bubbles in your mouth. <laughs> but I love this color so much. I actually had the sample knit out of it. Um, this is what it looks like in socks. My friend Olga made these for me. Um, that's what it looks like in socks. And I'm like, ooh, a Felix pullover. <laughs> and then I'm also thinking a half Murray, half Murray, half Surrey fingering weight held together pullover. But this is in mohair, so therefore my brain made Murray. But look at the shine. Come on, look at the way that silk behaves with this tonal guys this is paloma and it is like all peachy grapefruit and i love it so palomas are just grapefruit not peach but this i have a feeling is going to be like a not not for me not in the collection but i feel like this is going to be like a staple sweater um and i dyed a lot of sweater quantities of this because is it is the only tonal that i have of this collection um and if the sweater quantities sell out fast with this one, I will probably open it up. Um, like if you want sweater quantities, I'll probably open it up after I see how quick it sells, if it does. So you'd be able to get that because this, 
body of a sweater come on um and then i saved my favorites for last <laughs> i love these but if you know me you know i love blue and uh sea foam mint green mm, i love it uh this is mojito which is also my favorite drink in the whole entire world besides pinot noir um mojito it's got the lime it's got the mint leaves it's got the lime pulp bits the neon oh mm. i love mojito and then blue hawaiian because if you ever go on any tropical island, um, uh, say your prayers for Hawaii right now. Oh. Uh, but if you if you go anywhere and you get like the most like touristy beachy drink, it's always that big bright blue like shaped glass with the umbrella. It's a blue Hawaiian. Um, so I've got the blue Hawaiian, which is like the blue curacao drink with the pineapple and the cherry. And mainly it's supposed to look like the drink and the paper umbrella that you get. So all of those are the drink colorways plus Stitch on the Beach, which is this. Um, and you can't get those until my shop is empty. So if you want indie dyed yarn, literally indie dyed yarn for less than $20, it's so cheap. Y'all just go like, I mean, there's a ton of Nanny's yarn left and a ton of shell phone. And I've got um, a lot of Sunday I have a few Frosty, a few Purple Dragon, um, a few Tulip, a, like only four Hot Kiss left. I've got a lot of Love Bug, Gumdrops, um, a lot of Marigold. But if you want a sweater quantity, chances are you're going to have the best option of getting Nanny's Favorite or Shell Phone because I have a ton of that. And Shell Phone is like literally my dream. I've got a cardigan out of it. Um, yeah, I've got a cardigan up there out of it and I've got a whip out of Shell Phone. And um, I might snag a sweater quantity uh, if it doesn't sell that fast. But this literally, I love Call Me On My Shelf. Anyways, go shop. So, ramble, ramble, ramble. This giant bucket that I bought way, way back in, I think, 2016, when I first started Anything Yarn. Um, I think I got this from Joey. No, I got it from Michael's. I got it from Michael's in their little section of like photo boxes. I, I'm not really sure. Let me, it's on the back. I got this when, um, what brand is that? It was like this spongy tube yarn was super popular. Okay, let's see. I got this from Michael's. It was $16.99. It's a spring decorative box, okay. It's just one of those boxes that they've got everywhere. Some of them have like the magnetic lid. Anyway, when I first started doing yarn related things in 2016, I thought that this was going to be big enough to keep all of my yarn in. And I also thought um, I had it. It's this exact same shape, but it's like tiny, like tiny. It would fit like a mini iPad in it. I was like, that's going to hold all my tools. I'm literally sitting in an office where I've got a full room's worth of stuff. And here a little 2016 year old Mace was like, oh, all your yarn will fit in this box. L-O-L. Um, but now all my sock blanks fit in this box. So y'all heard me talk all about the sock blanks last episode. Um, and I'm like, I need to knit these. And I've got family that we recently became more close with. Um, a couple months before Paps was like, hey, peace out. I'm going to go hang out with Nanny. Um, we, and some people get offended by the way I talk about that. I do that so I don't get upset. Like I'm saying Paps is going to go hang out with Nanny as in like they're off together rather than saying a couple of months before my grandfather passed away. Like it's, it helps me not get upset. And I know somebody was like, how dare you? Um, what was the message? They sent me an email saying like, how dare you disrespect your grandfather's death by saying he peaced out. And I'm like, no, bitch. Um, I say that so I don't get upset on camera. So if that offends you guys, I'm sorry. I don't know why it would, cause he was my grandpa. But um, when I say he peaced out or when he went to go hang out with Nanny or he's hanging out with Nanny, like one of those things, it's so I don't get upset having to say that he's gone. So anyway, you can fuck off. Um, not y'all, the mean ones. Uh, we, his sisters, they live in another state. Um, I don't know how they are with public 
information. So they live in another state, not saying which one, it's close. Um, we started hanging out with his, past his sister a couple of months before, and uh, now we're like super close with them and they come down like once or twice a month and they're super fucking fun. <laughs> and uh, I was like, hey, we've now, and one, like, one of their daughters is my age, I think, uh, maybe she's like a couple of months older than me. Anyway, we're the same age and uh, all my other cousins and stuff uh, that I'm close with that are the same age are guys and it's kind of like but now we've got one that's like we've always had them but they've been at a distance but now um, we're close and we talk and she's hilarious and I'm like oh my god I'm gonna knit them socks for Christmas because I like we're friends now and I love them and I just want to make them something and I texted her and I was like hey what's your sister mom and dad's shoe size she also Maddie if you're watching this I hate to call you out bitch but I've got size 10 so we're fine she's got a size 11 her sister is a or her mom is a 12 her sister's a 13 and her dad is a 15. sock blanks to the rescue because <laughs> I am not hand knitting that uh anyway and I've got sock blanks to use and then also I there's like six other members of the family which I don't know their shoe sizes so I'm focusing on the ones that I have the shoe sizes of um I have this I know you're probably like what did you just set over there this is the yarn that was held back uh so I'm going to just set all of those um yarns that were held back over here so and I also just have a ton of basic knit picks colors for heels toes and cuffs and knit pick stroll um and i don't know why i bought two orange and two black don't know why uh so here we go i have all of these sock tubes and i'm showing you these sock tubes um mainly because can a sock tube make two men's u.s size 15s is that possible <laughs> like for instance is this Felici? Okay, this one I know is Felici. Knit picks Felici. Um, this is the like where the skein stopped, where the double stripe is. Can this make a men's 15? I mean, I'm not, I have a sock ruler somewhere, but these are supposed to be women's tens. Here is cuff, like say the leg is this and foot is that. I know I'm a 10. I know a 15 is not that short. So maybe, you know what? It probably could. They might just be like hiking socks. Cause when it's folded, I know his foot's longer than that. Maybe it'll be like a, I don't know. I, a 100 gram skein can get a men's size 15 sock. Can it? Can it? Let me know. <laughs> Um, I don't know what colorway this is. This is Knit Picks Felici. This is, by the way it feels, is not Knit Picks Felici. No, it, no. Knit Picks Felici is like spongy as hell. I don't know what this is, but it was a 50 grammer. Um, it could be Felici and I might just be talking out my ass. Um, this, oh, you know what? The, this probably is Felici because they're all 50 grams. This reminds me of Yo Gabba Gabba for some reason, like that kid's show, because it's green and orange. Um, this seems like a little 50 grammar. That seems way smaller than the other one. Oh boy. I just might have to pick them wisely. That seems way, hang on. Hang on. Okay, I was not tripping. That, oh, duh, you idiot. Because I have the yarn held back. <laughs> because I have 20 grams held back. No wonder it's shorter. Ugh, okay. Problem solved. <laughs> I was about to be like, wait, has Knit Picks been skimping? No, they have not. Okay, so this one just does not, this will not have matching heels, toes, and cuffs. Okay, good to know. Solved that. Fleech. <laughs> This I remember it was called Speed Racer. That's also Felici. This one I love so much. These colors, I love it. I don't remember what it was called. Um, this was 
uh, giant skein. This was not 100 grams. This was more. I think that was one of those like hefty ones, not Felici. Don't remember what that was. Uh, this was Felici, but I made mom a pair of socks out of the first one. So I've got that much left. This was not Felici. It was Nitty Bow Fiber Co. Aquila and Johnny Bow of the Lefty Knitter Podcast. This was their mellow yellow color. And actually this is for my partner. Um, I bought this <laughs> like a year ago and have not done socks with it. Um, this was Knit Picks, not Felici, but I remember it being called Yeti. Ugh, oh, here we go with the... Do y'all ever get like textured out? I don't know if there's a word for that. Um, but Hobie, uh, I like Hobie yarns. It's extremely affordable. Um, they're fun. And uh, TL Yarn Crafts, I cannot wait. It drops sometime in September. Um, TL Yarn Crafts, Tony Lipsy. Uh, if you don't watch their YouTube channel, what are you doing? Um, I don't crochet <laughs> and it's a crochet only podcast, but I still watch her yarn snob reviews like nobody's business. They just were dropped a yarn line. It's not dropped. They teased because the yarn does not come out until um, September at some point. I don't know when. Uh, yarn line with Hobie called Happy Place and I cannot freaking wait to get a hold of it. Um, I am planning. There's a pattern I already know that I can't think of and I'm not going to say it until I get the yarn because I can't think of what it is. Um, and there's no yarn to link to if I want to talk about it anyways, but it's on her Instagram and I cannot wait to get it. But Hobie's cool. Hobie's great. Alt Knots also loves Hobie. They had Christmas yarn and I was like, hell yes. This was 2020 Christmas. I was like, I'm going to make everyone in the family matching Christmas socks. As you can tell, I did not. <laughs> but I do have, this is a tube. It's a sock tube. I do have two toes on the end of it. This is like wool. Uh, then I've got, oh, there's no sock on that. Oh, this is just two ends. This is also that like really wooly wool, keep your toes warm feeling. Then these are the ones I was talking about, like the text, the texture thing. I don't know what the sparkle is, but it ain't good. It's like a, and I'm not shitting on the yarn. Some people might like this texture. It's that sparkle. It feels like tinsel. Not the tinsel in like the good tinsel way, but it feels like the tinsel that you get at like in the dollar store Christmas decorations. Like the, oh God, now I got to clean all that up. Like that kind of tinsel. Um, it's extremely, like extremely sparkly. Like that just went across my chest and that did not feel good. Um, as socks, you know, I think it'll be okay, but I, I just, do, I don't like working with the sparkly, but I've got two toes, um, in this one. So it's ready to be cut. Um, and I'm definitely like the sock is not going to be this long. Like this, I was planning on cutting it in half and adding another toe and then cutting in the middle and they were going to be shorties. Um, but that's a lot of knitting. And at this point, I don't like the feeling of it, but I know damn well, nobody's going to want that on their calves. Um, I really like this one. It's like vintagey. Uh, this one I had picked up to do the toe because there's a toe on that one already. Um, and then I ordered this like right when Hobie's Christmas yarn dropped and I stopped because of the, the feeling of it. But you know what I'm talking about? That like, that's what the yarn, you, can, you probably can't even see that. Um, it's like just not, not the sparkle that I'm used to when it comes to like indie dyed sparkle or, or even like Lion Brands Thick and Quick. Um, like that one, there's one line that's got the sparkle in it. Like that sparkle's okay. This is just like so rough. I don't know, like I would not put that next to skin. This is fine. This is just toothy. Like it's like wooly wool. Like I know damn well these are going to hold up and this is fine. Like I would buy more of this. I'm not getting irritated by it. Um, if my skin turns red, it's just because if I rub it, it turns red. It's not because it's a, n not this. Um, but like they've Halloween yarn that I love. 
and I like this and I bought uh, more sock yarn that's this material. So this one's fine. It's just a sparkle that's been like, and I know people probably know what I'm talking about when I say it's like, I got textured out by it. Like, it's like, okay, that's enough touching that. <laughs> it's like touching a shower loofah, like the creepy, the creepy looking sponges that are like the real sponges. Those creep me the fuck out. It's like touching those when they're dry is the feeling that I get when I touch them. <laughs> I know somebody out there knows what I'm talking about. But anyways, I have all these sock tubes and um, I have to figure out who's going to get what. And I don't know, like I don't know them enough that I know like, oh, that color is totally them. This one's totally them. So it's kind of gonna be more of like a, I hope they like green, <laughs> like a, I don't know their color preferences, but I know none of them. I did a, I told, hey, cousin, if you're watching this, I know they don't because I don't think they know that I have a podcast, so I'm not worried about it getting spoiled. Um, but I, those are big feet, and I can't say shit because I also equally have big feet. I'm 5'6". If y'all don't know that, I'm 5'6". And I have a size 10 foot. Not proportionally accurate. Maybe that's why I'm so clumsy, but like I struggle finishing other socks because I'm a size 10 foot and any of the people that I've asked to sample knit socks probably also know like hmm, I had to make her a sock she's got size 10 feet so see like this is how much was kept back from those sock tubes so it's like way way more than enough um to do heels toes and cuffs with but it's just like ooh. some people might love this feeling I just don't so I have a feeling that those sparkly Christmas socks are, you know what? I could just pull the waist yarn from the ends and like crochet bind off and just like wrap those around my baby. I, uh, my partner and I, when we moved in together uh, in 2018, we got like a little white Christmas tree, like those little baby ones. I could just wrap that around as like, what's it called? Garland, because I, And I know people also know what I'm talking about. <laughs> These are um, leftover bits from sock tubes that I've already done, uh, held together with like those little hair elastics that I thought that at some point, maybe when I had time, I could convert them into gloves. I doubt that will ever happen. But I just wanted to show y'all, those are all the sock blanks. So if you are creeping on Ravelry one day and you randomly see me upload a pair of socks, that are like long and be like bitch when did you do that you did not do that um they were tubes <laughs> so before anyone is looking at my Ravelry like when did you make that they're tubes that I'm going to be periodically from now until Christmas most likely I'm going to be late I'm probably calling it right now that they will not get done and I will scrap the idea hopefully not because I'm leaving my printer sits on top of this box and my printer is like on my desk right now and that bothers the shit out of me um, so hopefully that will be bothering me enough where I'm like, mm, I have to knit these sock tubes so I can put that back in this place. Um, y'all are just seeing more and more how my brain works, but yeah, I need to be knitting lots of sock tubes, but I just needed to mainly do this whole entire podcast to tell y'all about the 1999 sale and to tell y'all to go report Juju Knits Instagram is hacked and that I knit this insanely cute thing super fast because I love this so much. Okay, my that light is still jittering and it's driving me crazy. <laughs> okay, um, hopefully that episode wasn't as long as all of my other ones or as annoying. I don't know, but um, love y'all and I will see you hopefully with socks finished. <laughs> I don't know. It's just one of those days where I'm like, you drank so much coffee in the morning and then I went and got a 44 ounce sweet tea and a gallon of tea and I drank the whole entire 44 ounce tea and I filled it up with the gallon that I bought and I'm halfway done with that too. So it's kind of one of those like, shut the fuck up, you've had too much caffeine and these people don't wanna hear what you're saying. Anyways, have a great day, go knit, go crochet, go do whatever you wanna do with some yarn. Um, Everything will be linked down below. I'll see y'all in the next video. Hopefully I won't be as rambly. Okay, see you later, bye. <laughs>